In this session, we will discuss the summarized experiment data container. This is a more modern or new version of the expression set. We will uh, use an example data package to illustrate it. The example data package is called Airway. And we need to load the uh, data uh, into R and we can print it. In many ways, this uh, looks superficially somewhat similar to an expression uh, set. There, it has a dimension, uh, 65,000 uh, rows and eight columns. So in this case, it means eight samples and 65,000 genes or exons or whatever it is we have on the other dimension. There's uh, a lot of things that are very similar to expression set, but has a slightly different uh, syntax and output. So. What we are used to knowing as P data from the expression set, we access using call data in the summarized experiment. And it returns not a data frame, but a capital data frame, the new type of data frame that was introduced in Bioconductor. As before, we can see that there are some sample identifiers uh, and some information about uh, specific details of, of the experiment. We can get a column uh, like for expression set by using the dollar operator. So I can say airway dollar cell and get back that specific column for the thing. As for expression set, this is highly useful. We can look at uh, experiment data, details about how the experiment was made. And in this case, it's pretty empty. Uh, we can try to see is there anything in here. There's some information here. Um, we can see that we can see which paper uh, was uh, uh, which paper where the, the data comes from. We can see a PubMed ID and so on and so forth. We no longer have sample names. We only have column names, which are really the names for the different samples. Uh, and again, we don't have feature names. We have row names. we can see that the feature names look like ensemble gene identifiers. So how do we actually get the uh, expression data? In this case, that's not obvious, but this is uh, RNA-seq data. How do we get the expression measurements? Well, in summarized experiment, we use the assay uh, accessor. In order to use the assay accessor, we need to know what type of assay it is. So first, we can look at the printout of the object itself. And you can see in the, in the printout that there's one assay and it's called counts. You can also guess the list, list of all the assays by uh, writing assay names, anyway, which gives us back just counts. So how do we get it? We say assay um, airway, and we give it the name of the assay we are trying to extract. So this is counts. So this is gonna be a big matrix. Uh, I'm gonna subset it so we just get the first four uh, genes in the first four samples. And here it is. This is RNA-C count data. The new thing in a uh, summarized experiment that you didn't have an expression set was that each row or each feature has an associated G range or G ranges list with it. So we access that using row ranges. And uh, let me first, uh, 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 get the length of this, row ranges. It's uh, the 600, uh, the 65, 4,000 different uh, features we have. We have one range for each uh, thing. So in this case here, we uh, the row ranges is not a, a simple uh, G ranges, it's a G ranges list. Uh, the idea being here that each row is a gene and we get a G ranges list, and each G range in the G ranges list gives us the exons of the gene. So here we can see that the very first gene, the gene that is being measured in the first row, has 17 exons and is located on chromosome X. And here we have the coordinates for the exons. This is very useful because often in next generation sequencing, we are measuring things over. Uh, genomic intervals, and here we can keep the genomic intervals together 
with the experimental data. So, for example, we can look at how many exons do we have per gene, uh, or how many exons do we have in total. We use element lengths to uh, uh, to give us the uh, length for each uh, for each g range, and we can sum them up. Oh. That was not row data, I meant row ranges. Okay, we have a little uh, typing mistake. So we can see that we have 64,000 genes and we have set almost 750,000 exons. Now, uh, there are some of the standard G-ranges functions that you can just access directly onto the airways uh, uh, data set. For example, if you want to have get the start coordinates of all the exons, we can uh, uh, do it like this. This gives us a list with the start date of uh, each exon and each element of the, of the list. In a similar way, we can use um, subset by overlaps, which is quite useful. So let's say we have a G range that gives us some uh, 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 an interval uh, on chromosome one, and it shouldn't be chromosome one because it uses a different uh, name. So range of start one and ten to the seven. Okay, so this is a standard G ranges. And now I can say, let me just get the genes inside airways in an airway that overlaps this specific genomic interval. And it's subset by overlaps. So there's 329 genes inside this uh, uh, 10 megabase uh, genomic interval, and here we have the data for it. So this summarizes the summarized experiment data class. So we access things using row and call. We, uh, have the G ranges we can access, and um, we have the assay function for getting the expression measures or whatever uh, is measured in this summarized experiment.